because we are kings and our words matter. God will give to us. We live in another economy. It's not a greed economy. It's not a scraping, scrounging economy. It's not a taking advantage, merciless economy. It is not based on greed and lust. It is based on love. It says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over shall men pour into your bosom. This is a totally different economy, my friend. Greed. Greed. Where does it come from? It comes from a sinful heart. Selfishness that wants to just gather for oneself as much as possible. That's where greed comes from. You see, we talk about finances, we talk about prosperity, but we are, we are not for greed, my friend. We are for being prosperous for the sake of God's purposes. To do God's will, we want to be prosperous. To do God's uh, uh, work here, we want to be prosperous. There is no greed. And we don't have to push and shove and kick and do all this kind of gymnastics to get anything. God will give to us. We live in another economy. It's not a greed economy. It's not a scraping, scrounging economy. It's not a taking advantage, merciless economy. It is not based on greed and lust. It is based on love. It says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over shall men pour into your bosom. This is a totally different economy, my friend. That's why in Hebrews chapter 13, you know, that verse is wonderful. Verse 5 to 8, I don't have the time to read it, but read it when you get time. Let me quote it from memory. It says, don't have love for money. And he's writing because Christians were having trouble and they were thinking, my God, you know, we're having so much trouble. So we'll put away as much as possible, you know, we'll just pack up everything and get as much as possible, get as much as you can when you can and that kind of thing, you know. They're going for it, you know, with that attitude. Tomorrow we don't know what's going to happen. And uh, he says, wait a minute. That's not how you live as a Christian. 
Tell brother, but tomorrow you got to think about it. No, I don't know what's going to happen. Let's let's do whatever we can. Say, wait a minute. Don't have love for money. He has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's where it comes. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Therefore, we should say, God is my helper. I am not afraid. What shall man do unto me? And he says, follow them that have taught you the word of God and have set an example for you. Follow their life and consider the end of their conversation or end of their life. How they finished. How grand they finished. How they all ended up. Follow their faith. Not follow their fear. If you follow world and its economy, you'll be following fear. It's all based on fear. What will happen if you die tomorrow, you know? What will your wife do? What will your children? That's world's thing, you know? That's fear, brother. Are you following fear or faith? Follow their faith. They're men of faith. They were challenged by so many circumstances, so many difficult things, so many problems. But follow their faith. What did they do? How did they believe? How did they win? Follow their faith. And then it says... Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Why does it say that? Why does it say Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever? There. Because it says he took care of you yesterday. He takes care of you today. Tomorrow you think it's going to be worse. And who's going to take care of me? I tell you, he says, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God took care of you yesterday, didn't he? See, some people become different when they get money. Now they think differently. When they didn't have it, they thought differently. Now they think, now they, because they got it, now their mind works differently. My God. Tamil, they have a proverb, you know, that says, <laughs> That's not Bible, brother. <laughs> they say, oh, let's go to it now. Let's get all we can and can all we get and sit on the can. That's the, that's the, this is the time now. Things are going good and I must sit on my can. Not let any one penny miss go out of here. You know, that's world's philosophy. That's fear. You are following somebody's fear. You are following the fear that comes out of the newspaper, comes out on the television, comes out of the world's philosophies, comes out of the people's mouths that you know that live by fear day and night. They're talking fear about tomorrow. You're following their fear. Bible says, follow the faith of those people that have taught you the word of God. Follow their faith, my friend. What does their faith say? Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He took care of me yesterday. He is taking care of me well today. And tomorrow, he will certainly take care of me. One fellow said to me, but what if the economy grows worse, brother? What economy did they have in the wilderness? Who was the finance minister? What government did they have? Which party was ruling? Nothing. God was ruling and reigning among his people. And I'll tell you, none of them ever lacked anything. Not one feeble among them. No one died because of hunger. Every day, food was delivered and water was delivered. And when they wanted meat, God downloaded meat three feet high, 40 kilometer distance either way. He said, eat and is this enough and do you want more? They ate until it came out of their nostrils. <laughs> to deliver meat for 20, 30 lakhs people, how many lorries will it take? What kind of road and infrastructure you will need? What kind of equipment you will need? What kind of organization you will need to deliver like that for one month? Moses says, how are you going to do it? For not for one day, not for two days, not for one week. You said one month you'll feed. How are you going to make delivery one month? God said, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is my arm shortened? God, just, God said, Mo, who do you think I am? You think it's not possible for me? You think I can't do it? You think because the economy is so bad, you're down in the wilderness, there's no shop, there's no money. No, he said, nothing is too hard for me. Is there anything too hard for me? My arm is not shortened. How many of you believe that today? You need to rule and reign. Whatever you allow is allowed. Whatever you permit is permitted. Whatever you prohibit is prohibited. Turn to another verse. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18, verse 18. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth, 
See, again, the same language he uses. Repeatedly he teaches it. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. In both passages, in chapter 16 and in chapter 18, both times when he talks about binding and loosing, this, verse, this word comes. You know what that word is? Whatsoever. Everybody say whatsoever. That tells me that on earth, whatsoever I bind will be bound. Whatsoever I lose will be loosed. It talks about unlimited, unlimited possibilities I have as I rule and reign through Jesus Christ today. Whatever I bind will be bound. Whatever I lose will be loosed. Unlimited possibilities. Everybody say unlimited possibilities. I can bind anything. I can lose anything. Anything. Man shall live not by bread alone, but by every word. I learned it a long time ago. Every word is important. So I began to notice words. Sometimes I'll preach on one word two, three weeks because that one word is enough to feed us. Every word. Whatsoever you shall bind. Anything. Anything I bind will be bound. Anything I lose will be loosed. That's the kind of ruling and reigning we can do in this world if we'll understand ruling and reigning. But a lot of people are going to understand it only when they get to heaven. I think that's why the Bible talks about how God will wipe away some people's tears there. What kind of tears they got there? Because they'll find out and they say, my God, I didn't learn about this ruling and reigning. For 40 years, I was ruled and reigned over by everything. And I thought, they told me that when Jesus comes, we'll all reign with him forever. So I didn't think about reigning there. And some angel will say, didn't you go to Prosovacum? <laughs> well, there's a place called AFT and the man was teaching there. And you'll say, well, but they told me he was wrong. No binding and losing now. Whatever is going to happen is going to happen. Whatever will be, will be. I believe that kind of philosophy. Too bad. 40 years you wasted. Everything ruled on you. You never ruled and reigned. You got wasted. Because you believed in Jesus, you get, got to heaven. God is going to take the heavenly handkerchief and wipe away your tears <laughs> and say, welcome. At least now you rule and reign. But we are already practiced here, so we'll be in higher position. <laughs> You'll be taken as a recruit. <laughs> because some people don't know what ruling and reigning is all about. Too bad. You can live this whole life on this earth and never learn about ruling and reigning now. Never learn about binding and loosing, and that's how you rule and reign. You rule and reign by binding and loosing. See? Look at the next verse. Matthew 18, 18 is what we read, and it's the same as what we found in chapter 16, right? And here, 19, again I say unto you, so he wants to say it again because this is not an ordinary truth. He wants to get it across. Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth, everybody say on earth. On earth. Now that's another, verse, another word that you have to no notice. On earth, it comes in every verse. On earth, on earth. Verse, verse 18 says on earth. Chapter 16 also, it mentions on earth. Everybody say on earth. <laughs> On earth, my friend, because everybody likes to put it away to heaven always. In heaven, brother, we'll reign, rule and reign. No, no, on earth. On earth, right now. On earth. If two of you agree on earth as touching anything, I love it. Everybody say anything. anything. What do you want? Anything. As touching anything, two of you shall agree on earth. If you agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done of them of my Father which is in heaven. Heaven is ready to do whatever we ask here on this earth. Heaven is not where everything begins first. He, want, he wants, now it's our turn. The ball is in our court. God is saying, what do you want? John Wesley said, God will not do anything on earth without a man asking for it. Now he's a man who understood the whole thing, idea, and put it in one sentence. But in order to explain it, I preached 10 sermons in a series called Why Pray? If God will not do anything unless a man asks on this earth, if God will not do anything on this earth without man asking, what is the meaning? How, how can you say something like that? Without a man asking, God won't do? So I talked about prayer. Why should we pray? Because that's man asking. Why God wants man to ask? Because the Bible says the heavenly father knows that you have need of these things before you ask him. So why should we ask if he already knows? You got to ask because he wants to know if you want it. Hello. 
even though he knows that you have need of these things he wants you to ask because you are the authority here you say yeah now if you go to the bank and if you got 10 lakhs there in cash waiting in your account and you go there in the bank and say praise state bank give glory to state bank and rejoice in state bank and sing a couple of songs about state bank nobody is going to maybe somebody will drop you some coins thinking you're a beggar you see <laughs> nobody is going to give you anything <laughs> you may say yeah i got the money here something is going to come to me whatever they want they can give to me whatever they wish they can no it doesn't work like that you got to go write a check and give it in the counter and they give you the money right <laughs> same thing with god god says yeah everything is here it's all yours but if you ask i'll give it to you because without a man asking i won't do anything on this earth because a man asking is very important because you are the one that should move the ball first you are to make the first move then i'll make the move because i have said everything in motion there is a law at work i've declared my will and i've told everything i've declared my will and it is available here so according to my will you ask and whatever is given in this will if you ask i will give it to you if it's there in the account you'll you'll get it whatever bible says is yours you'll get it if you ask two of you agree on earth as touching anything everybody say anything so westley was right god doesn't do anything on earth without a man asking for it is it true if god is sovereign then can't can god do it anyway no he has set himself he has he has he has set some laws in motion i believe in the sovereignty of god that god is all powerful and everything but he has set some principles by which he operates he says this is the way it operates this is the way we will work it yeah i can do anything but this is the way it works all right i like it because i know at least how it works if you came and said me god's ways are mysterious we don't know how then i'm in trouble you know then i won't go to church because what can i learn about god's ways i'm here because i can learn about god's ways in math in uh, psalm 78 there is a wonderful verse is it possible that this almighty god sometime can be limited by our limitations psalm 78 and verse 41 it says this yea they turned back and tempted god and limited the holy one of israel the people of israel limited the holy one of israel God brought them out wanted to take them to the promised land flowing with milk and honey they didn't get there they died on the way not because god was limited in power or strength not because god forgot them forsook them no because they limited him they didn't want him to do all those things they didn't want him to they didn't want god to do great things they limited god by their lack of faith they limited god by speaking exactly the opposite of what god has said god said i've given you this land but they'll never say it they said did you bring us here to die notice the word that god said and notice what they said repeatedly he says i've given you this land and they say repeatedly you brought us here to die you thought there's no graves in egypt you brought us here to bury us so god finally said all right i'll oblige you <laughs> you are always talking about being buried here so you get buried here you know that's it. you've spoken it into being you know they limited the whole this not that god didn't want them to get to the promised land it's they limited god almighty god but he could not take them into the promised land because they limited god they put a limit on god they would not allow god to do mighty things through them they would not allow god to take them into milk and honey into prosperity into abundance into glory they were slaves and they want to die as slaves god says fine if you don't want it what can i do hello are you there <laughs> the living new living translation is an english translation it says whatever you prohibit on earth will be prohibited in heaven whatever you allow on earth will be allowed in heaven i read these translations because some people say why did god allow this or allow that no god didn't allow you allowed whatever you allow it will be allowed it says another translation says whatever you prohibit will be prohibited whatever you prohibit on earth will be prohibited in heaven whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven i have read to you several translations previously in some other context so i'm not going to go through all of that but the idea is there allow permit 
it's all done by us we allow we permit anything failure comes we allowed it our greed our lust our sin our unbelief has allowed it don't blame god for it you know people like a no fault religion have you ever heard of that that's a new religion <laughs> but it's not that new it's old no fault religion you know what a no fault religion is people say whatever happens is not my fault before it of they'll tell before anything happens if it happens it's not my fault if it doesn't happen also don't ask me it's not my fault no fault religion have you heard of that everybody looks like you have never heard of that maybe some of you are thinking maybe i'm oh my god he's talking right about me if you think i'm talking about you then you should sit up straight and smile and say praise god brother somebody needs it today then nobody will think anything about you <laughs> if you be stiff everybody will think maybe he's talking to him you know <laughs> just telling you some ways to get away with it <laughs> then you can go home later and say later and say god forgive me in front of everybody i couldn't do that <laughs> but the thing is this <laughs> no fault religion is found everywhere have you seen people that say what did i do wrong brother i want to ask god what did i do wrong why did he allow this that's the no fault religion i'm talking about you've seen plenty of it maybe you've seen it in yourself sometimes what did i do why did god allow this as if that they could do nothing wrong and god is all the time doing something wrong that he is at fault all the time and you are never at fault all the time i can guarantee you my friend i can give it to you in black and white in writing that any time anything goes wrong it's wrong on our part not on god's part because god is righteous and god is good and he's never flawed never at fault and we are the ones that go wrong hello so don't believe that stuff about whatever is going to happen is going to happen what whether we bind or loose it doesn't matter god is going to do his will he's all powerful he's sovereign he'll do whatever he wants it doesn't matter whether we bind or loose we can't change anything all that is nonsense the bible doesn't teach teach that in fact the bible says in deuteronomy 30 verse 19 you'll find it it says i put before you life and death and blessing and cursing choose life now that's simple enough you don't need any assistance for that you need to go you don't need to go tuition learn what to choose this is not a hard multiple choice there's only two choices life and death and if you don't know how to choose choose this one he's like a teacher who's given the test paper and he stands by and says choose this that's the better one and man says no i want to go for this <laughs> you always have a choice right you always have a garden of eden man had a choice god said don't choose that don't eat that the day you eat you'll die man said yeah that's what i'm going to eat <laughs> now every one of us have a choice you know today we're all sitting here enjoying and have a good time we're all good holy good people decent people but if we all decided today let's go have a party drink and roll on the street and, and <laughs> be head over heels with alcohol and whatever else you know we can get and and go berserk and crazy if we decide to do that do you think we can do it yeah it's possible we have a choice if we decide and we decide to go and just have a riotous party out there i'm sure we can have it today as soon as it's over we can go and do it but to do it will be foolishness why because i got a nice family wife and children everything is going well i got this church and i'm doing something wonderful and i'm happy and things are going well i want to go better and better and better i got to be a real fool to do something like that to lose everything that i've got why would i want to lose the blessings of god why would i want to throw away everything that over the years i worked and uh, and with the help of god i've been able to work and develop you see i don't want to throw it away so every day i face this choice it doesn't mean that i can't sin i can very surely sin i can decide today to sin and go fall in sin and go head over heels over it and be immersed in sin and be rotten yeah every day i have a choice every day the choice presents itself before me and every day i make the choice 
Every day I say to myself, Deuteronomy 30, 19 is not something I read one day and shut it up. I say every day, Sam, choose life. Choose life. Nothing but life. Don't choose death. Don't choose curse. Choose life. Everybody say, choose life. <laughs> Look at the person next to you and say, choose life. I want to choose life. This is the season of Jubilee. This is the season of Jubilee. Singing and dancing for you and me. Singing and dancing for you and me. Thanking and praising because we're free. Thanking and praising because we're free. Oh, this is the year of Jubilee. Oh, this is the year. Don't you believe? Put your hands together. Everybody praise the Lord. Put your hands together. Sing, shout, and praise the Lord. This is the season of Jubilee. This is the season of Jubilee. Singing and dancing for you and me. Singing and dancing for you and me. Thanking and praising because we're free. Thanking and praising because we're free. Oh, this is the year of Jubilee. Oh, this is the year of Jubilee. Put your hands together. Everybody praise the Lord. Put your hands together. Sing and shout and praise the Lord. Everything that was stolen shall be returned unto me. Mother, father, sister, brother, they will all go free. Everything that was stolen shall be returned unto me. Sing, dancing, praising, shouting, increase in victory. Sing that again. Everything that was sown shall be returned unto me. Mother, father, sister, brother, they will all go free. Everything that was sown shall be returned unto me. Sing, dancing, praising, shouting, increase in victory. shall be returned unto me mother father sister brother they will all go free everything that was stolen shall be returned unto me sing dancing praise and shouting increase in victory this is the season of jubilee 